Hello everyone. This is Dr. Mungli. So today I am going to explain to you on one of the question which is based on a disorder, one of the four disorder in fact, which was explained originally by Archibald Gerard, who is uh, the uh, considered to be a father of inborn error of metabolic uh, disorders is the very first one to explain about inborn errors of metabolism and he has explained four disorders in that one of the disorder is the question that I am explaining and also I will be explaining the answer and about that disorder little bit in details. So the question is uh, which one of the following enzyme deficiency is likely to cause the disease which can manifest as the findings shown in the figure above. So in this above figure here as you can notice there is a slate gray or bluish black pigmentation in the ear lobule here where I am marking out and there is a bluish black pigmentation of the joint cartilage and also there is a pigmentation down here in the tissue. So the options that are given here is option A to option E and that is cystothionin beta synthase dihydroteridine reductase, tyrosinase enzyme, homogentisate oxidase, p-hydroxyphenyl pyruvate hydroxylase enzyme. Going with the signs that are shown in the figure, there is a slate gray or bluish black pigmentation in the ear lobule, joint cartilage and in the tissue. So this kind of pigmentation one of, and also going with all the given choices here, one of the things that I am considering here is a disorder called alkaptonuria. And this alkaptonuria is because of a defect or deficiency in an enzyme called homogentisate oxidase enzyme which is involved in the catabolism of amino acid tyrosine. Now other options that are mentioned here that is option A is cystothionin beta synthase enzyme. Deficiency of this enzyme give rise to classic homocystinemia which is where you see a totally different signs and symptoms. Dihydroteridine reductase enzyme deficiency will give rise to non-classic phenylketonuria. Tyrosinase enzyme deficiency will give rise to albinism and P-hydroxyphenyl pyruvate hydroxylase enzyme deficiency will give rise to type 3 tyrosinemia. So, I am squaring out here with the disorder that is alkaptonuria. Let me further explain you on tyrosine metabol catabolism first and then I will take you to alkaptonuria. Okay, so this slide will show you tyrosine catabolic process so that is the catabolism of tyrosine so tyrosine is converted into p hydroxy phenyl pyruvate enzyme so the conversion of tyrosine into p hydroxy phenyl pyruvate and uh, this job is done by tyrosine transaminase enzyme now the p hydroxy phenyl pyruvate is converted to homogentisate and that job is done by homo sorry p hydroxyphenyl pyruvate hydroxylase enzyme now the homogentisate is converted to melyl melyl acetoacetate this is done by homogentisate oxidase enzyme melyl acetoacetate is converted to fumaryl acetoacetate done by melyl acetoacetate isomerase enzyme now the fumaryl acetoacetate is broken down into fumarate and acetoacetate by fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase enzyme. Now the fumarate is a gluco, it goes into glucose formation, so it's a glucogenic substrate and acetoacetate is nothing but it's one of the ketone body. It means tyrosine is broken down into ultimately catabolized into glucose and ketone body. That's why tyrosine is considered to be both glucogenic and ketogenic. So some of the enzymes that you have seen here is you have seen tyrosine transaminase enzyme. So this tyrosine transaminase enzyme deficiency it can give rise to type 1 tyrosinemia. 
then we have tyrosine p hydroxyphenyl pyruvate hydroxylase enzyme deficiency of this enzyme will give rise to type 3 tyrosinemia then we have fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase enzyme deficiency of this enzyme will give rise to type 1 tyrosinemia so where there is accumulation of fumaryl acetoacetate now let's concentrate on our enzyme which leads to alkaptonuria and that enzyme name is homogentisate oxidase so the homogentisate oxidase enzyme is the one which converts homogentisate into maloyl acetoacetate deficiency or defect in this enzyme will give rise to alkaptonuria okay so here is your alkaptonuria so conversion of homogentisate into maloyl acetoacetate in this conversion you need homogentisate oxidase enzyme what if this homogentisate oxidase enzyme is deficient or if it is absent so consider there is a deficiency of homogentisate oxidase because of the decreased activity of homogentisate oxidase so there will be elevation of homogentisate in the blood in the tissues and in the blood so the elevation of homogentisate generally it is it doesn't really give rise to physical signs and symptoms initially so anyway so the homogentisate oxidase deficiency will give rise to a disorder called alkaptonuria and this alkaptonuria largely it remains asymptomatic kind of disorder until unle, uh, means until 20 to 30 years of life means second to third decade of life so you patient do not really see a significant physical signs and symptoms the reason for this is the homogentisate that is elevated in the blood it will be rapidly filtered by the kidneys into the urine so overall there will be elevation of homogentisate in the urine and in the if the urine is uh, if it is allowed to uh, stand urine for a long time so it will turn urine will turn slate gray or bluish black in color this is the only sign that you are going to see in alkaptonuria in initial stages so especially it is uh, the and also uh, in the earliest sign of alkaptonuria is bluish black staining of diapers this is the earliest sign that you see so the baby diapers because of the elevation of homogentisate so if it it will be oxidized into its uh, quinone derivatives and that will be con uh, staining uh, diapers bluish or black that's one of the earliest sign that you see other than this initial stages of alkaptonuria you don't see many physical signs and symptoms now there is since the rapid filtration of homogentisate is there in the urine so not much of homogentisate is accumulated in the tissues but still over a period of time means over a decades so slowly there will be accumulation of homogentisate over a period of time means it takes decades like 10 years to 20 years so in the especially this will be accumulated in the cartilaginous tissue so there will be enzyme mediated conversion of homogentisate into benzoquinone acetoacetate molecule so especially in the cartilaginous tissue this benzoquinone acetoacetate molecule it will be accumulated and this is the molecule which has got slate gray or bluish black in color this is the colored molecule here so this is the molecule which will be accumulated in the tissues especially cartilaginous tissue and accumulation of this tissue will give rise to a generalized pigmentation of the cartilaginous tissue we refer that as ochronosis note that ochronosis is a sign of alkaptonuria it is not a disease i'll repeat ochronosis is a sign of alkaptonuria it is not a disease ochronosis simply says that there will be generalized accumulation of benzoquinone acetate molecule which is a pigmented molecule so this is a polymerized molecule here so there will be polymerization of benzoquinone acetate derivatives and this polymerized molecules will stain the tissue and that staining we call it as ochronosis so the staining can uh, so this kind of polymerized uh, molecules can be accumulated in the joint spaces giving giving rise to ochronotic arthritis 
generally the large joints are involved here that is knee joint hip joint and shoulder joints can be affected so the patient will have acromatic arthritis in his third or fourth decade of life and also there will be generalized pigmentation in the tissues wherever there is a cartilage so cartilaginous tissues will be looking like it will be having slate gray or blackish blue pigmentation some of the tissues to mention here so sclera there will be change in uh, slate gray or bluish black pigmentation of the sclera ear lobules joint cartilages heart walls so these are the things that can be stained with uh, pigmentation of these tissues can be seen and also the polymerized oak, uh, quinone derivatives can precipitate and make a kidney stones so overall so all kept nuria patients they will have bluish black color of the urine they will have ochronosis and that is ochronotic arthritis generalized pigmentation of the cartilaginous tissue and kidney stones so this is an interesting case alkaptonuria here although it's a rare disorder so it is an autosomal recessive condition and it is commonly epidemiologically it is commonly seen in slovakia so slovakia is the one of the country where alkaptonuria is commonly seen and another country where alkaptonuria is seen is dominica republic so these are the two countries where alkaptonuria is frequently means uh, seen at high frequency than other parts of the world and that is slovakia and dominica republic this is all about alkaptonuria i hope uh, you you understood little more on alkaptonuria i hope this video helped you in understanding process if you like the video please give thumbs up and also for regular updates you can consider subscribing to my channel to get a notification in your emails so that you will be kept updated about my videos thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day